Hi everybody, today we're going to be talking about how to make bassoon reed blanks using our Cornelison forming pen and mandrel set. My name is Conrad Cornelison and I am co-founder of LC Double Reads and designer of the Cornelison bassoon forming pen and mandrel set. And if you haven't heard about our product and you want to know a little bit more about the history and the design of these mandrel pens, I highly recommend you check out our video on them. Uh, where we discussed the design elements and the inspiration behind this tool. In today's video, we're going to be talking primarily about how to actually use these forming pins in a practical context, uh, so that way you can get more consistency out of your bassoon reed making. So as you may know, on the design of these forming pins, there are two lines inscribed, one here and one here. Uh, this bottom line indicates the point at which you form the reed down to, and the top line indicates where the reed should fit after beveling and or when the reed is finished. You can really use any forming process to do this, but I'll just briefly walk you through the forming process that I use, so that way you know what I do when I'm using these forming pins. So starting with a piece of gouged, shaped, profiled, and scored bassoon cane, uh, you wanna soak it, long enough to make sure it's completely saturated. I recommend at least six hours. And then measure and fold it in half at the halfway point. The two halves should line up together perfectly, uh, especially if you used a straight edge to fold it over. But if they don't line up perfectly, then you can use a set of pruning shears to do the job and cut off the excess. After you've folded the piece of cane in half, I like to put one wire on the reed for now, uh, approximately in the position that our first wire will go, um, just to hold everything in place. It doesn't need to be super exact or super tight at this point. The main function right now is just to hold the two halves together so they're not moving around. Once the wire is in place, I then like to use crocheting cotton to wrap all the way down from the wire down to the butt of the reed and back up past the wire about halfway up the blade. And this is just to give it a little bit of extra support from all directions during the forming process, as well as to give us a surface to use our pliers on without damaging the cane itself. After it's all wrapped up, the next thing I like to do is just toss it back in the water for a few minutes just to make sure that the thread itself is also saturated. And once we've done that, we can actually move forward with the forming process. So the first thing we need to do is to insert the tip of the forming mandrel into the back of the reed, but sometimes it can be a little small, so if it's a little too tight to fit in, you can gently squeeze the sides of the reed with your pliers, uh, just to dilate the opening a little bit until there's enough clearance that you can insert the tip of the forming mandrel. Once the tip of the forming mandrel is inserted, you can then rest the base of the forming mandrel against the table and press straight down vertically onto the forming pin while holding the reed from its sides. Again, the goal here is to get it all the way down to the bottom line on the forming pin. It's very possible that it may not want to go all the way down on your first try. So what you can do is alternate between pressing down as far as it will go and then rounding out the tube a little bit with your pliers just to loosen it up and then press down again. And I would repeat this process back and forth until it gets all the way down to the bottom line on the forming pin. Once it's formed all the way down to the bottom, you can then use your pliers to again round out the tube of the reed just to make sure that we have equal fitment around the forming pin. We want to avoid seeing any little gaps at this point. From here, that's all we need to do for now until the reed has rested on the forming pin and completely dried for at least two weeks or so, and that's just for maximum stability. So you can remove the pin from the handle, pop it on the drying rack, and then depending on how many blanks you're planning on forming during your reed making session, you can then repeat the process with as many as necessary. After the two weeks have passed, we can then move on to the next step of the process, which is, for me, the beveling process. Now, I know that everyone has sort of their own way of doing this and their own order of operations. Uh, you can modify these as necessary to work for your reed making system. But again, this is simply what I do, what works for me, so take it with a grain of salt. After it's rested on the forming pin for two weeks, then remove the wrapping, remove the wire that's on it, and then we will do the beveling process. 
For me, the main reason I like to use the Hertzberg bevel, as this technique is called, is because it creates a strong fulcrum, which helps keep the tip open, and it also creates a nice round seal at the back of the reed on the finished product. Now because we removed physical material from the reed during the beveling process, it's not going to fit as far down on the forming pin as it did originally. That's what the purpose of the second line is for. So after we've done the beveling process, we then want to go back and put on all three wires. And when we do that, we want to have it fit to the top wire on the forming pin. So this measurement gives us a good measure of consistency for how our finished reeds should fit on the forming pin, as well as giving us a good measurement for where we might get good fitment on our bocal. Now depending on which bocal you use, you may have a larger or smaller opening at the end of the bocal, so you may need to adjust accordingly for your placement for the finished reed. Uh, for example, one of my students, their bocal has a much larger opening, so we actually need to make sure that the finished reed fits a little bit past the top line on the forming pin, as opposed to right on. In either case, it gives us a really consistent visual reference that even though my student isn't using that line exactly, they're still able to achieve extremely consistent results. At this point, you can then wrap the reed and clip it and finish it as you would normally. Now keep in mind that cane does expand and contract over time, and because there's a wrapping on the reed now, it will only really expand inward as it absorbs water. This means that we may have to ream the reed a couple of times throughout its life to maintain proper fitment. This is another part where having that top line on the mandrel really comes in handy because as we ream it and as we check the fitment over time, we still have a consistent measure that we can reach. So I really hope that you found this short tutorial helpful. Uh, if you have any other questions about the forming pins or questions about how to use them, feel free to let me know in the comments and I will address those as best I can. If you found this helpful and you enjoyed it, be sure to give it a like and subscribe and stay tuned for next time when we put out more videos on the topic. For more information on our forming pens or any of our products, please check out our website at www.lcdoublereads.com. You can also find us on Facebook or Instagram at LC Double Reads. Thank you so much for watching. Be well.